Welcome to Ella J. That's with a J. About 90 miles north of Atlanta, where the Kusawati lay. They come out of the hills to pay their telephone bills in a town called Ella J. When the mayor drove a shiny 62 Corvette, Slim was in a cruiser with a Cobra jet. What you see is exactly what you get if you come to Ella J. Hey, Ella J, a mighty fine place.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning from Ducktown to Ball Ground and all points in between. We're glad you tuned in this morning. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> I am Mr. Ella J. I'm sitting in for Sherry. Sherry couldn't make it today. She had a big, big deal going on, big closing in real estate. So that tells us one thing, folks. Now we know where to go to borrow money. We can get money right here. As soon as that stuff transfers, I'm going to be talking to her. Anyway, it's a very good morning. And uh, Vic, we've been getting a lot of rain here lately, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Uh, it, well, what do you think about that? Well, I'll tell you, I found out back in 1986 yeah? that you can do with it better than you can do without. Yeah, that's Vic Davis, folks. <laughs> I think he came up with that one. Yeah, you can do with it a lot better you can do without it. Anyway, we're happy to be here this morning and I uh, want to say a word or two about ETC. ETC is a locally owned company, folks. They are such a service to our community. They bring us uh, telephone. They bring us home security with monitoring. They bring us uh, rapid... Uh, they blame a, a reliable, fast internet service and just a host of things. They supply a lot of jobs for everybody in the whole North Georgia area. We thank ETC for having us this morning. Thank you for having us on. And uh, about that telephone I mentioned, you know, you're on, you're, we all have cell phones. We all have cell phones. I do. Vic does. But... <clears throat> Have you ever been talking on a cell phone and then somebody start going, can you hear me now? I'm going to have to call you back. Let me, let me get in it where I got some signal. We'll call you back. Well, let me tell you this. That don't happen with ETC hard lines. How would you like to call 911 and them go, we can't hear you. Get somewhere where there's signal and call us back. You don't want that to happen, folks. Get you a hard line. Call ETC. 706-276-2271. Get connected. Get connected and stay safe. Now, on a very serious note, myself <clears throat> and everyone here at ETC would like to ask you to say a prayer for the family of Glenda Sue Johnson. <clears throat> they are facing some difficulty, and we want you to keep them in, in your prayers. Glenda Sue was a friend to everybody, and uh, she is, uh, she's having some difficulty today. So if you could, say a prayer for her. And now... I want to thank these, uh, these producers in here. What a bunch of cut-ups. Trace and Tim, they do the best work ever. They do the best work. None of this would be possible if it wasn't for them. Anyway, well, Vic, me and you have just been through everything, haven't we? Yeah, pretty for much. For a long, pretty long much. time. Pretty much. It's, yeah, it's, it's been forever. We never have been too bad to drink, though. No. <laughs> Neither one of us. <laughs> no, we didn't. But you, we've sure had some things that might drive you to drinking. Oh, yeah. Up yeah, there at 57 yeah. Heaven. Wouldn't you agree with oh, that? Oh, yeah. Boy. Oh, me, oh, my. We've <laughs> seen some times up there. We've worked on Candy Cane. And little Candy Cane's looking good now. Y'all know her. She's the red and white 57 Ford. She just recently got new shoes, and uh, she got a bunch of new wiring and a new switches, and she's just purring like a little kitten. And a bunch of that is thanks to this fella right here. How do you like working on them Fords, Vic? Well, I'd rather work on Chevrolet. <laughs> but since you've got one and you're a pretty good fella, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll yeah. point out something for you. Well, that to good fella part now is going to depend on who you're talking to, but I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Anyway... <laughs> That's about what's going on with Candy Cane. Now we got the custom. We're going to give you an update here on 57 Heaven and all the things, the continuing saga of 57 Heaven. We got one up there. It's called, we call it the custom. It's that gray car. You've seen it in the movies. And it's a very, very clean car, that is. It's good. And Vic, we've got two motors that we could set either one of them in there right now anytime we take a notion. And it's about to happen, folks. Well, We're maybe about you to could... set a motor down in that gray thing. We got a 351 Cleveland built on the stand and ready to go, and we got a 312 Y block built on the stand, ready. Which one do you think we ought to use? Uh, you on 
maybe had you thought about putting one in the back and one in the front? Well, that'd be a good idea. I hadn't <laughs> thought about that. We'll get with Ronnie Harrington and see what he can. Yeah. He'll dream up something on this, I'm sure. But anyway, we got we got a motor going in there real soon. Everything's set to go in. It's all done pretty much. You might as well say done. The transmission's ready. Everything's good to go. Then there's the fire lane down at the unmentionable body shop, the one we will not mention. It's almost ready to go. It's done got its engine in it. It's got a 390 GT, and that's all set to go. And uh, there's a uh, Vic's favorite that I have is the Chevelle. Did you see that picture of me a while ago in front of that 66 Chevelle? We you got look? another one just like it, except way less hair. <laughs> yeah, well, good. Vic had something to say about that. Yeah, good. He's not a fan of the hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, all the way from uh, from ball ground to uh, up to uh, Ducktown. Thank y'all, everybody's watching. I know you're in your living room. Are you happy to see me? I ain't been here since before Christmas. I've been real busy in the studio and getting uh, things done with the Chevelle and the engines and all this stuff. And uh, Things are going pretty good. I'll cover that more here in a minute in the studio. It's, uh, I know, you know, you think, well, what's taking so long? <laughs> I'm sure you think that. And I can tell you, these guys in these, these fancy guys in the, uh, in the, in the big cities and, and so on, and, and especially stars, you know, which I'm certainly not, when they do a new CD, it happens quick. You know why? Because they got top-notch drummers, they got top-notch bass players, rhythm guys, they got top-notch uh, lead men and singers and, and all this stuff. I have top-notch singers, by the way. That's Astrid Hayes. They also have fat pocketbooks, too. Yeah, they do. They have fat pocketbooks. And uh, they have all these engineers and, and uh, producers, and they don't even really do anything much, if you want the truth. But me, it's different. That drummer we talked about, that's me. That bass player, that's me too. And the producing and all that, I try to do it all myself and it gets very, very time consuming. I have to work and work at it. I'm not complaining, I'm, I love it. <clears throat> but I will say this, there's a little more to that than meets the eye. And uh, we, uh, we just finished up a, uh, a little project for Vic Davis right here, and he's. Uh, you're gonna hear some of those songs today. We're gonna play one. Or, what, you, what song did you say we're gonna play? Um, it's. Uh, I wouldn't change you if I could. Wouldn't change you if I could. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, actually, anytime y'all are ready, guys, we could we could put that on right now if you want to. We have the best producers in the whole world. We throw them curveballs, and they catch every one of them. <laughs> and. Uh, it's a little song that I did the music on and Vic's singing it. Here it is now. Is it ready? Okay, run it. Just the 
We're back again. Vic's been in here bragging on all that music that was played there. You pretty happy with that, are you? Oh, absolutely. That was good. That was, well, looked like it come out of Nashville. Uh, it sounded like it come out of Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> it come out of the basement of the Dwight House, I'm afraid. But I'm glad you like it. That's a good project, Vic. Now you you were reluctant to do that. Well, what what do you reckon caused such thing? Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you remember when we got the proof thing, you have to get them back, you know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, get the proof. And uh, I said, well, uh, everything's all right except the singing. And you said, I'll guarantee you it sounds just like you. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Vic, I just about had to twist his arm to get him to do that. But aren't we glad he did? I tell you, I told you this during the, uh, the making of that <clears throat> over and over, I think that uh, older fellers like you and you've been in music all these years and now you know we're, we're on up in years and I'm right behind you I ain't far behind you I they like that people enjoy hearing you sing them songs and I, I told you and I'm, I told you the truth people liking it ain't they well yeah I, you know I've had a, a few Pretty good compliments on it. Of course, I, some of them I call sympathy votes, you know. <laughs> I don't think we had a lot of that. Uh, but uh, people people enjoy it. And uh, who do you think is uh, somebody that might have, is, is there somebody that, that sticks out that, that really did enjoy the music? Well, I probably shouldn't call names over the well, phone we or might over not. the air there. <laughs> Just <laughs> but, one of your good friends that lives here in town. But, well, yeah, they've, there's been a couple of good friends that give me an excellent compliment. Yeah. And, well, and what was that about one of them? Was, well, uh, both of them, <laughs> one of them wrote me a, a handwritten note and thanked me for it and uh, and she, she said, <laughs> "Yeah, she said uh, I don't care to tell you I had a tear in my well, eye on that first one there." That's what <laughs> I was wanting you to say. That's the part I was wanting to get up to here. Oh. I believe, folks, I believe that when somebody cries about one of your songs while listening to it, I think you did a real good job. I think that's what that means. I believe it means you did a good job. And Vic, you did just that day. Well, I thank you. I'll, that's you, a good project. Uh, it was. And it you, sure is. And I have to brag on you as well, anybody to listen uh, on the music. Uh, and what what is amazing to me about it is you did everything on it. You know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. And, uh, and then uh, you called me and said, uh, come on over and put your thing on there. And I said, yeah, now you're going to ruin the <laughs> CD. <laughs> well, it certainly did not. It sounds good. And anytime you want to brag on me, it's okay. Well, yeah, I will. <laughs> but you know, the uh, if you don't mind me saying on, on the air here, uh, uh, really, one of the main reasons we did that project or I wanted to get on in on it was uh, I did the thing for my grandkids, really, right. to have something to, I gave it to them for Christmas, yep. and they seemed to like it, and uh, so that's the main thing. Yeah, that's if, good. If I they, think... If they can keep it on down in the future and say, well, yeah. that was my granddad. <laughs> I believe that's in the back of all of our minds, don't you? Well, I think really it is. I think, you know, when I'm down there doing things, it comes through my head every now and then. Well, when I'm gone, they're going to be listening to this, and you'll know it's your yeah. old long-lost yeah. daddy-o. Yeah. And that's worth it all, really. Yeah. And, and the, if you don't mind me interrupting again, the, the, the picture on the cover of that CD, you, you did that? Too. I did it too, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a photographer, not really. Oh. I've been called a lot of things. But photographer never was one of them. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, let's go back in the day, Vic. I know everybody loves to tell old stories. I love to hear them. Wasn't it really different used to? It oh. was just so different way back. Now, some of you some folks watching this, you're going to know exactly what we're talking about. And if you don't know, you probably should listen up because <laughs> it's very interesting. Used to... This was moonshine country. Absolutely. <laughs> I think everywhere was moonshine country. Yeah. Uh, and, and the whole uh, lower part of the, or maybe even every, every bit of the United States, I don't know, but uh, 
did you ever have any, have any memories or dealings? Did you ever haul any moonshine? Ne never hauled any, but yeah. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've climbed in a many a gallon to get to bed, I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, heck, it was, it was uh, a way of life back it then. It was a way of life. Well, yeah. there was a lot of little hungry mouths fed. Absolutely, with it too. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was. They wasn't anything to do. Uh, no. Well, you you mentioned age a while ago, and I don't mind telling you, mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I was 89. Yes, you were. And you I can remember. Vic just had a birthday. <laughs> Yep. I can remember uh, a lot of changes. And, I'll bet you do. And uh, uh, moonshining, uh, you know, some people look down on it, but a lot of a lot of stuff that you hear on the out of town news, it, they make it sound worse than it was. It, it was bad, well, but yep. but I know. I know what put food in my mouth there you lots go. of times. <laughs> and a whole lot of people wouldn't have and be where they are today if it wasn't for it. And some yeah. people might not even be here, I tell you, it was food. Absolutely. Vic, what was, uh, looking back, how, how did, was it like a, was it like a, like a little assembly line, I guess, or something? Well. Did y'all have people, did, uh, did you know people that hauled it? Oh, and, yeah. And, and you had yeah. your favorite haulers yeah. and stuff like that. And then there was that time, I guess, when, when, when somebody was hauling and he got caught. Yeah. <laughs> you got any story? Could you tell us something well, about some of that? One of my favorites <laughs> is that there used to be a guy, when the chicken business started back uh, several years ago, and the Purina Chow was the name of yeah. the food for yeah. chicken feed. Uh -huh. And there was a guy from Rome who, he had a ton and a half truck. <laughs> And yeah. When he come, he got a load. Yeah, yeah. And and the way he had it, he had a stake body on it, and uh, you could uh, look right through, of course. Yeah. And he had Purina leaves, uh, sacks of leaves or straw or something, and he'd pack them down the side of that. And yeah. When you look through the sides of it, it looked like he's <laughs> hauling Purina chow. Interesting. And then he had. <laughs> He could haul, as I recall, it was something like 500 gallons. He could haul yeah. at one time. <laughs> well, one morning. So he had a ton truck. It was a ton and a half, God, really. It was a, what we call a lumber truck back in yeah. those days. Yeah, yeah. And he was on his way, and he was he was going to Rome with it somewhere over in that area. And one morning early, and yeah. a spindle broke on the front of his truck. Oh, me. Well, there's no phones in that day, no cell phones right. anyway. He had to walk a long ways, and anyway, make a long story short, he took him a long time to get some help out to fix his truck. Yeah. By the time the help came to fix his truck, somebody had noticed what he had on it. Oh, boy. And there was a pretty good crowd gathered around it having a party. <laughs> I bet so. Well, yeah. he, he couldn't stop and admit it was his. Yeah. So he just drove on by and left it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's one way of dodging it, ain't oh, it? Oh, that was. Heck yeah. But that was always a pretty interesting story, and that's, that is the truth. Well, I, mean. I know it is. Uh, uh, you and your brother Larry, boy, dear to my heart, Larry Davis. Well, I appreciate and, that. Uh, what a man, what a man. Yeah. Y'all have so many good stories from way back. And, uh, it's so authentic and it's so real and and with the times uh, you know we really I'm glad we're recording some of this yeah I really oh, am yeah, because yeah. it's it's things that someday and probably already a lot of people can't even relate to none of it old memories hot rod cars that Larry Davis could make a car oh. he could he could take a six cylinder car yeah <laughs> and I know I've heard him tell it and yeah. I know it's the truth because I've heard other people tell it yeah. too he could take a car that had a six cylinder, and what do you do? What y'all do? You put a you put a four barrel carburetor on. Yeah, he he he. Larry didn't buy anything off the shelf that he could build. Oh, I know. <laughs> and he yeah. could build most anything, and yeah. uh, it's easy to brag on your brother, I know. But uh, well, no, it's you need to brag on Larry he, Davis. He, He's a sight. Uh, for for people. And you to, are too, Vic. You 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 don't give yourself well, credit a lot of times. You. 
while Larry was doing what he was doing, you was over there building the motors and, and you on another side of the uh, end of the spectrum maybe, but you, yeah. you made stuff happen too. Together yeah. y'all could get it done. Tell us about the four barrel on the six cylinder okay. motor. Well, <laughs> I, I called it the octopus. <laughs> yeah. It, it said about this high off of the manifold. Uh -huh. it, it actually had to cut a hole in the hood for the carburetor to stick up through, you know. How about that? And uh, and he he shaved the head to people to know what we want to raise the compression. He he shaved the head on that thing a hundred thousand. How about that? And and he put some kind of putty in there and and turned it with the head bolted down and turned the engine to see if the valves was going to clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, didn't y'all uh, take that to the racetrack and one beat V8s, oh, didn't you? We beat V8s. I, I did it myself. I, I wasn't no driver, but it was it was a sure winner, really. Well, in fact, I bought into the thing long in the last there, and uh, he put the, he did all, most of the mechanic work, but he he set the engine in that thing at the front seat, and. Uh, and you could raise the hood, you didn't see anything. You it's, know? it's amazing. And, and, and the, the, <laughs> the scoop for the carburetor was on top of the windshield. Yeah, how about that? And it was in a Henry J. A lot of people, you have to be old like I am, remember a Henry J. Yeah, but, uh, I remember. And along about that time, I bought into it, uh, and uh, we didn't have a whole lot of money into it, and uh, a lot of work. But, and we, after I got into it, uh, we ran that thing 23 times, yeah. I believe. What about that? Most of them against six cylinders. Yeah. And we we got 22 trophies. Beating V8s yeah. with six and, cylinders. And we beat, uh, we, would, we would run our class, and then you could pay $5 extra and run yeah. the next class. Right. And well, that, I can tell you this. <laughs> I can tell you this, and y'all know him too. There's a lot of people around that remember Larry Davis. Larry Davis, folks, tuned the strip teaser, okay, yeah. for yeah. Bob Thomas, yeah. and hired Neil, the driver. He tuned it. He was the motor guy. They, these days they call it the motor guy. Yeah. Larry Davis was the motor guy yeah. for the strip teaser. And I want to tell you this whatever was in an engine, Larry Davis would get every squeezing of it out. Am I right? Yeah, he, he would. He knew how to do it, buddy. Guys, are we needing to, uh, you want to run that song I recorded? Yeah, I recorded you a new song this morning, something that you haven't heard before. Sit down right here and recorded it. It's an old one by Vern Gosden. Are you ready now? Okay, it's by Vern Gosden. <clears throat> it's called Do You Believe Me Now? I hope you like it. Thanks for watching, folks.
changed your mind I don't know if this is real I don't know if it's a dream I only know how good you feel If you could find it in your heart Say the fire for me still burns. I'll find a place to turn around on this road of no return. Do you believe me now? Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org.
we're back, folks. Thank you for watching us. It's my pleasure to be here today with Vic Davis. We're, both, we're old buddies. We go way back. He's been in here bragging on me during that commercial break. <laughs> he's a telling about, uh, he's bragging on my Hank Williams tribute and, and just going on and on. And I wonder, what is it you're wanting? Oh, <laughs> money works every time, don't yeah. it? Needing gas money. <laughs> well, I tell you, we go so far back, me and old Vic, <clears throat> we played music at the fair in the 70s. Yeah. We sure did. I got pictures to prove it. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. We played, old Vic played the steel guitar. Then you remember that time we went to uh, Gainesville, Georgia? Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. We, we played over there. What were, I forgot what that was. Far, but it was a, some big something they was having, and yeah. we went over there and played, and we just go back so far. Right now, I want to mention, there was an old guy that used to live right here. His name was Winston Sanford. He was a timberjack, and I know some of you are watching right now that remember him. He was a timberjack. He could take a Husqvarna chainsaw and lay a big old tree that you couldn't even reach around within inches of exactly where he said it was going. Today's his birthday. He's gone, but he ain't forgotten. Old Winston, happy birthday to him. And uh, anyway, we're moving right along now with the good old days, the good old memories. Back in the day, Vic, uh, I don't know about y'all, I guess you did too, I'm sure you did, uh, but we had, uh, we lived out in the sticks and didn't go to town. Now, going to town, now oh. I go to town four or five times a day, yeah. and everybody does, I guess. Yeah. But I remember in my day when I was a little old boy, to go to town was a big deal. Ooh, yeah. you, you didn't go to town. You, you dressed up. Yeah, you shine the Put shoes. Put on your other pair of bridges. Clean socks <laughs> and everything, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of times uh, I've walked to town plenty of times. Oh, yeah. Have you ever done that? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. You, you All grew the way up from out Clear on, Creek. Yeah, I was about to say, you grew up out on Clear Creek, didn't you? Yeah. Out there, what, around, around the Wright Farm up in yeah, there, wasn't it? Yeah, close to it, yeah. Did you and Larry Davis ever walk into town? We walked from town in the <laughs> middle of the night. Yeah. Can you, are you old enough to remember the late show that come on Saturday night? I am not, but I, I well, remember my daddy and them talking about well, that it, theater. It, it, it didn't start till 10 o'clock, and it run for a couple of hours, you know. Yeah. So you'd get yeah. out, uh, and if you didn't have a ride, you just walked home. Folks, what if you could just go back in time right now? What if you could just go back in time and you was driving a 54 Chevrolet two-door hardtop? And you, you pulled off of uh, Clear Creek Road out there at about the church, and you hit that dirt road, and there went Larry Davis and Victor Davis walking <laughs> at 1230 in the night. What if your lights <laughs> hit, <clears throat> shined on that one? That's something to think about, ain't it? The good old days. We could just go on forever, but we'll move on. This fella here is also a writer. <laughs> This this guy here, I laughed myself to death nearly when he brought this to me. It is so funny. He wrote this up about a place called 57 Heaven just, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. He wrote this and brought it to me. To whom it may concern, 57 Heaven is a growing hobby shop owned by fellow musician and old car nut Dwight Sanford, better known as Mr. Ella J. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fun and games, folks. The place was so named because Dwight owned several 57 Fords in various stages in re restoration or repair. He also has a vast array of other vehicles. Some will run, some may run in the distant future, and others are lost forever. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> several characters, frequent visitors... Our frequent visitors and advisors, most notably Vic Davis, he's right here now, mm -hmm. and uh, Ronnie Herndon, Wayne Oliver, Jerry Johnson, several other characters are occasional visitors. Vic knows enough about Chevrolets to be dangerous, primarily six cylinders, overdrives, and rear end ratios. Ronnie is a jack of all trade. Jerry knows all about the wiring and electricity, and Wayne is a number one observer and local used bicycle dealer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
We couldn't do it without all these folks, people. The things that happen up there. I ain't kidding you. Wayne Oliver will come over there so often, and I'll be doing something. He'll go, don't you think you should do it this way? And I'll go, yeah, you're right. I really should, yeah. <laughs> At some point, it became necessary to pick a foreman. Several characters were nominated, and after much arguing and name-calling, it seemed to be a tie between Vic and Ronnie. The tie was broken by Dwight, Wayne, and Jerry. They decided Vic was better qualified because... He owned the oldest vehicle, only owned Chevrolets, and lived closest to the shop. Ronnie has Fords and Chevrolets and also owns a sawmill. Yeah, what a gang. I have such a gang. Okay, an occasional character is Lloyd Jarrett, he only, who only recognizes Dodges and contributed to the motto, shop motto, we never let the truth stand in the way of a good story. <laughs> Lord, that is so funny. Loy lives by that motto. We're all a bunch of buddies, and, and we do have fun up there. And sometimes we get things done, but a lot of times we sit around and just have fun too, don't we? The shoot the bull. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, we've got... Uh, Pumpkin Center memories now, hot rod cars, jet fly radios, and uh, on, the, on the radio rather. And back then, Vic, is what I'm coming up to here, we had gardens, oh, yeah. big gardens. Everybody Nowadays, they'd call it a crop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but back in, in the day, we had gardens. We grew everything. We had animals. We had hogs. You remember hog killing oh, day? Absolutely. Yeah. That was a terrible day. <laughs> oh, yeah. You had to work hard. Yeah, you had to work hard. And uh, it'd be hog killing day, and uh, neighbors would come. Oh, yeah. Did you always do that? Did neighbors come around? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, they'd come, and we'd. Uh, They'd be hog kids. Sometimes two. Did you ever kill two hogs? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a day, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah. Tell us about some memory you have about well, back in there. I, I can remember hanging the things up my <laughs> leg. <you> Heavy. <laughs> Sounds horrible now, but I that know. was just the way it was done. Yeah. And, do and you know, what always amazed me, and I understand now, but I didn't then when I was a younger kid, it was the coldest day of the year. That was, oh, this is a good hog killing day. Yeah, yeah. And freeze, my goodness. It just, I know. Uh, but, and uh, the women folk, my mother and uh, ladies would come in and help. And yeah. of course, they'd always get a, a good mess of fresh meat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they worked hard for it, yeah. and they'd help. Do all the stuff that they yeah, they buddy. rendered out lard, I believe they called it. Yes, and, sir. Uh, and it, it was it was a hard day, yep. but it's uh, some fun to it too, you know. Yeah. Just congregating and communicating. You better believe you'd always have characters. <laughs> oh there. yeah, all right. <laughs> have some character. Yeah. My uncle Nez, he'd show up. Yeah. <laughs> and they they some of them be working, and the rest of them sitting around telling tales. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, the, uh, now if I start to bumble here, start mumbling and bumbling, just remember, you come out pretty well. Because with all that mumbling, bumbling, I could have been the president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Look out now, don't get all from the politics. <laughs> no, we won't, we won't, we won't do that. But, uh, did y'all have big gardens too? And oh yeah. And all that? Did you ever have to work in them gardens? Oh, absolutely. Oh gosh. And Dad would he he didn't just have now you have one or two tomato plants, you know. He'd have a big row. I mean, a long yeah. way out through there. Yeah. And and cucumbers, they'd bring them in by the bushel yeah, baskets buddy. full. I mean, buddy. <laughs> but. My mother canned everything. She'd start early in the spring. Everything from poke salad to all down through the summer. And and I, I can remember her saying, we better put up everything we can or we'll starve out yep. next winter. And she's probably right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. remember eating canned stuff yeah, in, the, in the wintertime, uh, open that stuff up and uh, picking poke salad in the spring. Yeah. 
Did you do that? Oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. yeah Got to sure. have that stuff. Yo, you want to run another song, guys? You got something you can run from, uh, from the Hank CD, maybe, or something? I don't know. Anything you want to. It don't matter. Whatever you got handy. That'll be good. We got to have a little music. Welcome, folks, to the little cabin across from Ace in LAJ, Georgia. Here's a song that my grandpa, Bill Sanford, used to sing. In church, I'd see him up there wearing that brown suit. He'd sing this song every Sunday. In the Bible we read of a city with streets that are paved with pure gold. We'll live in that city. You know, time just flies when you're having fun, folks. <laughs> yeah. It really does. It's uh, it's almost time to get out of here now. But you know what's good about this day? Sherry wasn't here, <laughs> bossing us around, <laughs> bossing me around, telling me what to do all the time, and being rude to me. Nah, I'm kidding. Sherry's our friend, and uh, she takes care of all of us. Believe me. And uh, we're. Uh, we're running up out of time here, and we've talked about some happy times. Got a heck of a man here with me today, and uh, much, pray for the. Uh, how much do I owe you for that? I'll, I'll get you later. Oh, you're going to pay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to pay. When we get to fifty-seven heaven, you'll mm -hmm. you'll be paying right then. And uh, keep the keep the uh, uh, Johnson family in your thoughts, because. Things are not going good. And uh, speaking of Sherry Martin, she just walked in. And, uh, well, I guess you're going to come in here and, and bless me out about something. The, while the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah. 
Yeah, we've been having fun. I walked in here this morning and I, I asked Trace, I said, what? What's wrong? What is it? He said, what? what is, I don't know. And I go, why is it so quiet? And he said, Sherry's not here. And I go, well, that makes sense. Now, that makes sense. That does make sense. The less talking. Oh, and I was real quiet while Vic was talking today. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to our audience here. Seriously, we appreciate y'all tuning in. And we've, uh, we just have so much fun, and we sometimes get a few things done. And uh, our cars, that's the main thing. Me and Vic love cars. Yeah, All you right here, folks, is the grandfather of all gearheads i can tell you something right now if you got a nice car and you're in this whole north georgia area and you're at a, a car show or or you're at a cruise in remember this there's a very good chance that vic davis built the motor that's in your car how many <laughs> motors have you built vic seriously do you know I have no earthly idea. I'd say I used to keep one going just about all the time. Yeah. Of course, I, I just did it at night. And, uh, yeah. I might as well be doing that and uh, just laying on the couch <laughs> sleeping. You know. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Sherry's approaching now. Come on over here. Come on over here. I know you got something to say. Come on in here. Come on. Give it. Hey, I am so proud of you two. <laughs> I'm so proud of you two. I'm so proud of you two. I'll tell you, flattery will get I you had, everywhere. Well, I had a meeting yeah. I had to do today, and thank you so very, very much because well, I was making money and being productive, <laughs> and y'all are making fun and having fun, and yes. that's important. And that's we important. know where to borrow money now. That's right. That's yes, right. That's right. right. That's right. Let thank me you know so when much. that transfers. Yes, I need to yes, talk to you. yes. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. And, I, I just want to ask you if we're are we on union scale here? Yes, today? yes, yes, you, yes, zero. Yes, yes, thank it's you so much. It's the Sherry Show. It's the Sherry Show, and thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, well, I had to run up here fun. and meet with our sign guy, but I'm it so was, glad y'all were able to do this. It was a and, whole um, lot of fun. It, really it, it was. was so much fun being in the studio with you as he produced your CD. That was amazing. Oh, that was amazing. That was. To That's be able to be CD. a part of that. You know, I had, to, I had to keep on at him to get him to do this. To be a part and, of that. That was special. Yeah. He kept saying this. I said, I promise you one thing, Vic. I promise you it'll sound just like you. Yes, oh, yes. yes. And I told him that was all wrong with it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I love that y'all oh, are such a It's a little chaotic friend. today, isn't it, people out there in video land? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're having fun. But but the friendship that y'all share is something that cannot be bought. You right. cannot buy that. You cannot, you know, that's just something very, very special. And it sure so. will never be replaced. That's right. That's yeah. right. So I'm so glad you had this opportunity to do this. And I'm glad I got the day off because the meeting was uh, kind of important. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to correct you on something, though. You, you. You call. You said I was 89 the other day. I know what you're not. Was, you're only 88. A week until I was. Yeah. <laughs> He's 88. <laughs> Let's it. get I it right it. here. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you both for doing this oh, today. And I'm going to step fun. away and I'm going to let him end the show. Be, yeah. well, there you go. Good to see uh, you, Jerry. Yeah. Well, it was a lot of fun. We did get it done. It was different, wasn't it? It was all different. <laughs> it's two old geezers up here talking about funny stuff and fun stuff and this, that, and the other. By the and, way, uh, Dwight, did you, yeah. I, let me interrupt, did you have uh, somebody posted to look out for talent scouts out there? Oh, there? those talent scouts, Lord have They're mercy. They're always lurking around, I have to, you know. Yeah, I have to turn my phone off. They're coming in from L.A., New York. Yeah. South Florida everywhere. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about South Florida right now. There's a lady named Astrid Hayes, and she's not in South Florida. She is in Maine on vacation. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I understand why you'd leave Florida to go to Maine on vacation, but Mr. Hayes, Mr. Seth Hayes, he likes it up there. Yeah. And we like Seth. Well, they're having a ball up there. They're doing ice fishing. They're doing a bunch of ice fishing. I've never been fishing. You remember me, don't you? I've never been fishing at all, and I sure haven't been ice fishing. And so, they're all up there having a big time. I'm getting lots of videos and, and pictures from her, and we're glad of that. And then real soon, she's going to be back here, or back in Florida, and then she'll come back here, up here rather, and she's going to lay down the harmony vocals 
to the songs you're going to be hearing real soon. It won't be too much longer. I've got the heavy lifting done, folks. Now I get to sit back and engineer and produce. My stuff is done. And uh, you'll have some new songs very soon. And uh, <clears throat> we got about two more minutes. What do you think about this whole thing? Well, it's good to be here with you, Dwight. I well, mean, uh, and how do you like the way I hushed while you was trying to talk? Well, I, I could get you to hush a little bit once in a while. <laughs> She's not paying attention. <laughs> that was supposed to have been funny. They didn't know. They don't even hear me in there. <laughs> but yeah, I ask you a question and then I let you answer it. How's that? That's pretty good, ain't it? Yeah. If y'all were listening, you'd be cracking up right now. He's listening. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Anyway, are we about ready to wrap it up? Two minutes? Okay. Folks, sincerely, I've enjoyed the show. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to call ETC and get connected to the world. And be safe at home. They will help you with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you to the producers in there. This is me, myself, and, and Mr. Victor. And I want to say it's good to be here with you, Dwight. It is good to be here with you, too, buddy. We have a very long-lasting friendship. You know, we've never had a crossword. Do you know that? Not that I know of. I don't remember yeah. one, ever. And we won't if I I'd, have anything I'd, to do with I'd it. Be, I'd be too <laughs> scared to, uh, to differ with you. Anyway, but anyway, it's been a good show. We talked about cars. We talked about pretty places. We talked about killing hogs and you name it. Wherever you are, we're glad you tuned in from Ducktown to Ball Ground. And I'll be back someday. I'm real busy now. I'm in the studio. But I came out to do this just to catch you up on what's going on. Well, I got about five new songs that are sounding really good. Really good. The more that I do, the more I learn. And it's coming along real good. And again, thank you for watching. I'm Mr. Ella J, and this is Mr. Victor right here. Stay safe, people. Thanks again. <laughs>